Obviously, you know, the death toll now in Gaza is around 7,500. Uh, that's what's being reported by most uh, people uh, who I tend to trust for this stuff. Uh, but Joe Biden was asked about the death toll in Gaza, and here is what he had to say. Hamas killed 14. 14- 18 days since Hamas, Hamas killed 1,400 Israelis. The Hamas-controlled Gaza Health Ministry says Israeli forces have killed over 6,000 Palestinians, including 2,700 t- children. You've previously asked Netanyahu to minimize civilian casualties. Do these numbers say to you that he is ignoring that message? What they say to me is I have no notion that the Palestinians are telling the truth about how many people are killed. I'm sure innocents have been killed, and it's the price of waging a war. I think we should be incredibly careful. I think not we, the Israelis should be incredibly careful to be Mm -hmm. sure that they're focusing on going after the folks that are propagating this war against Israel. And uh, and it's against their interest when that doesn't happen. But I have no confidence in the number that the Palestinians are using. Okay. That well, that I mean that was a complete sentence. It just shows you that whatever suppository they have stuck up his ass to keep him uh co- coherent in these press conferences, they were pressing the button to release that stuff into his bloodstream hard when it came to Israel. Yeah, apparently, apparently, but uh he has no confidence in the numbers that the Palestinians are using, well, you know who does have confidence in the numbers that the Palestinians are using? The radical far-left outlet, the Washington Post, which posted this on October 24th. Why news outlets and the UN rely on Gaza's health ministry for death tolls? Hamas appointed its own health minister after it took control of Gaza in 2007, separating the ministry from the Palestinian health ministry in the West Bank, which is controlled by the Palestinian Authority. After the takeover, some officials accused Hamas of ousting doctors linked to Fatah. Uh, Many experts considered figures provided by the ministry reliable given its access sources and accuracy in past statements. Everyone uses the figures from the Gaza Health Ministry because those are generally proven to be reliable, said Omar uh, Shakir, Israel and Palestine director at Human Rights Watch. In the times in which we have done our own verification of numbers for particular strikes, I'm not aware of any time in which there's been some major discrepancy. Shakir said Human Rights Watch would not use figures provided by parties with a propensity to misrepresent information. We know that a health ministry is going to base death tolls on assessments coming from hospitals, morgues, etc. They have an ability to collect that in a way that other sources not there can't do. And given the blockade, you make it impossible for uh, most uh, sources uh, to get there. And so there's the Washington Post saying, hey, um, here we have this guy uh, who takes these numbers seriously, and they print that in their paper. And so they are not the only one. Uh, A lot of human rights organizations have come out and said, no, these numbers are accurate. CARE put out a statement saying that this is unbelievable. This is dehumanizing uh, what Biden just said. Denying. Like what? You don't. So I mean, what the fuck? I mean, it's it's absurd. You can't trust Arabs. Right? Yeah, I mean that that's there's so much racist subtext in a lot of this framing that we don't even think about, right? I mean that's all that's always been the thing. We covered that on the patron stream last night. The Egyptian women, yet ye- woman yelling at CNN. What about our side, right? Because there's been this baseline assumption for not decades, centuries, that you know if it's coming from the West, it has the seal of approval. And if it's coming from any place else, it's suspect. And that is we're not we're not doing a segment on this. But just to mention it, um, the New York Times actually did a study of the claims of American intelligence and Israeli intelligence that they attract the missile that had likely blown up the hospital and it came from inside Gaza. And they used multiple cameras around Gaza to prove that actually, no, that missile came from inside Israel. And it didn't even impact the hospital. They didn't make that claim. They said it blew up about two miles away from the hospital after that explosion had already happened. But it just proves they sit down and they try to present the idea that they are credible and professional. And again and again and again and again, it is proven that they are not. So what position are you in to start questioning their numbers? You're you're providing reliable information. You're a reliable source of information. 
You just proved that you're not, literally, just now. Well, the big tell here was at the very beginning, the segment that we did when Max Blumenthal confronted Matthew Miller, the State Department talking head, um, when, you know, Matthew Miller said, uh, we will have discussions about Israel's plans or statements that may, you know, foreshadow or indicate a violation of international law. We will address those with them in private, behind closed doors. That tells you everything you need to know. That, and, and that's why we did that segment. That's why we hammered on that point. Because once they say, well, we are going to settle matters of dispute with Israel behind closed doors, that just tells you they are going to call a huddle whenever they have to to get their bullshit straight. And that's the line of bullshit that they're going to throw out. When it, when it was the hospital strike, we knew their line uh, at that point. Now, when he gets confronted, well, we can't trust these death tolls. What are you talking about? You said, like, the, the images and videos are out there. Entire neighborhoods destroyed. What's happening is very obviously a carpet bombing of Gaza. This is a carpet right. bombing. Right. And so what do you mean you're doubting the civilian casualties? You're doubting the numbers. I mean, it's just... It's just so obscene, but it is the kind of uh, thing that um, you could see coming from, you know, a thousand miles away. As soon as Matthew Miller says, well, we're going to keep matters of disagreement private, what that means is that they are going to meet behind closed doors um, and figure out how to handle issues that become PR problems for the state of Israel, even as Benjamin Netanyahu goes out and publicly says a thing like this. Let's go to this video against Hamas is a test for all of humanity. It is a struggle between the axis of evil of Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas and the axis of freedom and progress. We are the people of the light. They are the people of darkness. And light shall triumph over darkness. We are the people of light. They are the people right. of darkness. Light the crusades. shall triumph over darkness. You're going to doubt that the civilian casualties... This guy is outwardly framing this as a clash of civilizations right he said the morning of the attack on october 7th we are at war and the enemy is going to face an unprecedented response again you could see all this from the very beginning that none of this was difficult to see coming we said all this in our first broadcast since this happened when he says you can expect an unprecedented response, that meant genocide. There's no other way to interpret that because there is precedent for savage, large-scale violence on the part of the Israeli state against the people of Gaza, right? So if this is unpre so if we're about to see something unprecedented, it means we're going to see something worse than that, which could only mean right. the eradication of Gaza as a place with a, with a people in it. That's the only interpretation of that. And you could have seen that coming a mile away. And here we are. And how are they going to handle it? Well, turns out our government's going to do what they always do. Lie about it. That's it. That's all. Easy. Simple. Simple on their part. And it falls to us to get the word out. And luckily, um, not just we, Russell and I, but we broadly as a community, as a space here, have done a fairly good job, I think, getting the word out. That's why public opinion has turned uh, as much as it has. Well, we uh, we covered this on the patron show. I can't find it now. I think the Intercept uh, dropped this. Um, an Israeli think tank run by a former head of the Israeli version of the FBI under Netanyahu uh, just dropped a paper saying that October 7th was a tremendous opportunity to clear Gaza of Palestinians. And that is clearly what they are trying to do. There, there's actually a no Hebrew, question about it. There's a Hebrew phrase that translates as establishing facts in the field. It's basically the same as the English phrase, uh, better to ask forgiveness than permission. Right. Um, that's what they're trying to do, in my opinion. They want to drive all the Palestinians out of Gaza, absorb it as part of Israel. And then people can complain about it later. But at that point, it's a fait accompli. Exactly. Exactly. Please clap.